Welcome back. This is the third video. The first video we set up the Dwarf Remote server and I showed you how to connect it to your iPad or your iPhone. The second video covered world generation and now I'm going to cover your first steps as soon as you have embarked. I just started up the iPad application and I'm going to reload the same map that we went over last time. That took a few seconds to load, but here we are, back where we left off last time. All right, I'm going to uh, switch up the, the screen and kind of show something that I think is very important for new players to be aware of. And that is the Dwarf Fortress Wiki. Um, I'm gonna start off there um, just to kind of give you an idea about um, where I'm coming from when I'm starting. Uh, I'm not going to follow this too closely, but uh, this is a fantastic resource whenever you do get stuck. Obviously Google's your friend, but more often than not it will just take you directly to the site. This is a fantastic site to get to. Uh, right here is the Fortress Mode tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. This is a very good tutorial if you're just looking to go step by step uh, there's obviously a fair amount of reading because it is a wiki but I'm imagining you're not the most avid reader as you're watching a YouTube tutorial this legend right here I find to be particularly fantastic this is a really really great flow diagram for what you're going to want to do to start building up your fortress. As a result, I'm actually going to be referencing this for most of the rest of my, my playthrough. I'm going to switch again to a different screen. And I will actually kind of highlight this, this um, I guess, the, the flow chart here on the right side. As I, as I work through. So right now I'm just going to kind of walk you through kind of the larger um, part of the, the beginning of the game. So here at the top you can see we have this start area and that's, that's what we're going to be doing right now. We're going to be covering mainly the, the first steps which are chopping trees and setting our initial areas up to start building you know our farm plot here um, we're going to start setting up farms um, there's a fair amount of information I'll be going into um, that may be the next video though talking about farms um, from there the main two plants you're going to want to start um, kind of growing are pigtails and plump helmets right here and here. I will again be talking a lot more about those but probably not in this video. Alright, so switching back over to here. Alright, um, so here is is the place where we started. I'm going to um, kind of keep the Dwarf Fortress uh, window up here open as well, just so you can kind of see, you know, that as we're doing these commands, stuff is actually happening in the, in the back end. It's pretty nice that these are, you know, these, these commands usually line up one for one. Um, as I kind of start showing you a little bit more about what we're doing on this flowchart, I will kind of highlight some of the benefits of this flowchart. Specifically, they show you the keyboard commands directly on there. For instance, dig has uh, command dd. I will switch back over again real quick just so we can see it. So you would press the D key to do what's called designating, and then you would press D again to dig, and then you would select your zone for digging. Again, up in the um, corner here, uh, you have your... 
chop trees, which again would be D for designate and T for T, which is cut trees. And those commands line up very well with everything we're going to be doing. So I'm going to first start talking about the, the commands though. So there's a lot going on here. The, the main concept for the user interface for Dwarf Fortress is that you have these things called Z levels. So if you're thinking of this world as a 3D world, right now they're standing on kind of a 2D plane where, I mean, the, you know, up here is maybe north and west and east and south, but, you know, you can move sort of zoom in and zoom out as far as Z levels go, which you're going to do by tapping the up arrow and down arrow, and that will decrease or increase the height of, you know, everything on that relevant level. So I think maybe you can kind of think about maybe jump up five meters and then show me everything or maybe one meter maybe and show me everything that's there and then keep you know working your way up. So if I move up a Z level, you can see now that the trees are now blocking some of the dwarves and the wagon that we came in on. Um, if you keep going up, you will eventually lose sight of the dwarves, um, or maybe not completely, but mostly. And again, if we move down to the dwarves and then press down, we're now, you know, having some view that's kind of underground. The arrows here are, yeah, specifically about changing Z levels. Um, the other uh, tool that's right next to them is this magnifying glass. Um, again, these tools are right here because they are used in incredibly frequently, which is why they're, they're immediately available without having to dig into any menus. So if you tap the magnifying glass, there are three options. One is this house. If you tap on that, um, we don't have anything built yet, but I believe you can, you know, tap on the wagon. Um, from the wagon, if you press the little circle on the top right corner, you can see, you know, the items that are contained in there. It's a really good way to get a rough idea about the state of a, um, you know, a building. I guess wagons isn't exactly a building, but in this game, um, it's sort of conceived to be. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Um, it's, I mean, if you want to look through it, you can. It's probably not going to mean a lot to you right now as you're just starting out. But just wanted to show that it's there. Again, if we tap the magnifying glass and we tap the little picture of a dude, you can get information about our different dwarves. So this is uh, Deagle and Ilral and uh, Aiden. And say we wanted to look at Aiden in more detail, again, we would press the green circle in the top right corner. Um, we can see um, a lot of information about him. You can get your information from the dwarves in a different way. Um, I will show that next, but for now, um, this is just one of the ways to get information on dwarves and kind of drill in and see information about a specific dwarf. Um, once you're done, tap the X on the top right corner and that will deselect him. Again, we'll, I'll show you the final um, option. This is one that I, I use frequently. I think it's extremely helpful for seeing the things that you're just not quite familiar with. Maybe you just don't know what you know, one of these bushes are or something. So tap the magnifying glass, tap the eye. This is the look view. It lets you kind of look at things. Additionally, because this game, and you'll see these things, like this wagon, for instance, you'll see these icons constantly popping up. And what that means is there are multiple items in a single space. So this look, I, this look option is a great way to see the things that are currently there. I mean, this is the wagon, so there's almost every single thing we have is, is in there right now. So, um, you, you know, we can go ahead and look in there. But again, it's just going to take you to the wagon. Underneath the wagon is some dense bent grass. But yeah, that's, that's just something to, to, to know. Um, here's a broad bean plant with broad bean leaves broad bean flowers and broad bean pods it just means that it's a bean plant that we can you know harvest or remove if we if we needed to remove it um, where it really shines is I'm trying to see if there's anything around here yeah so I mean this is just you know a clay wall and peach tree roots right around here this is a dense dense reed, reed grass upper 
upward slope. These arrows just mean that there's a path capable here where you can have one of your dwarves who might be down on this Z level have the ability to walk up these up upward slopes to get on this Z level. In here, you can just you know tap around. Um, when it says nothing's here, obviously there is something there. It's probably dirt or clay, but um, what you see here is a lack of information. So just be aware that if it does say nothing is there, it doesn't necessarily mean nothing is there. It just means you may not know what what's there. So here's a you know peach tree and peach tree trunk and yeah, sorry, you can double tap on something to to open it up as well. I I usually prefer the circle because it's just a little more precise. Okay, I will go back down and go back to our dwarves. The next section for controls is, I'll tap the X again, um, this top right corner, um, that'll start the, the game going right now. It's currently paused, nothing's happening, um, everybody's standing still. If we unpause it for a second, you'll see people start to move around. They're just idling around, no one's really doing anything. And that's, that's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and just pause it again. On the top left corner, um, this is going to be a bit overwhelming at first. Don't worry about it. Each one of these things will make more sense individually later on. But I just wanted to show you that they're all there. Um, the main four commands that you can do to either you know dig things or cut trees or set up where you want your dwarves to build things um, establish stockpiles or grazing areas are going to be these top four items. Um, uh, designation, building, stockpile, and zone. If you're looking for key commands, so if we're looking again back at this flowchart, we see DD on the flowchart to say that, hey, you're going to want to dig out a hole. Um, what we're going to actually do is tap on designation because that's the first D and the second D is the mine here. So you can see how there's a um, <clears throat> a D next to here. That would basically just help someone who's maybe more familiar with the game on the computer translate their knowledge here to um, being able to play on the iPad. I'm assuming that you have little or no knowledge of that though, but just to let you know that when it says press D, D to dig, you're going to press the first D, which is designate, and the second D right here is mine, and then we can set up uh, areas where we're going to mine. Um, again, there's a bunch of different commands here. Um, I'll be using some of them in this tutorial. I won't be using others. Um, you're welcome to look them up if you're curious about them individually, but just hang in there. We'll, we'll get there. So I believe those are the main things worth showing. Um, finally, what I wanted to kind of highlight up here at the top, um, this is just saying that our current Z level is 108. If we go up, we're at 109. Go back down, 108. Uh, if you play games like Minecraft or something, you can think of the Z level as kind of a level where you're at, and then theoretically you can dig down 108 um, levels until you're at bedrock, although um, the, the underground systems here in Dwarf Fortress are pretty elaborate. Um, so I don't know if you'd ever actually be able to make it all the way to the bottom. I'm sure you could after given enough time, but, um, just to kind of give you an idea of where we're at and then you get, you can kind of scroll up. The other one next to it is this, um, hourglass with a six. What that means is that you have six dwarves that are currently idling. Um, I believe we have seven right now. It means one's doing something, but basically everyone's not doing anything, which is expected because we haven't told them to do anything yet. Now that we've gone over the commands, we're going to start doing the first two things you'll almost always do when you start a game of Dwarf Fortress, which is chop down a fair amount of trees around you and begin to start digging out wherever it is you're going to build your base. I think an important thing to, to kind of look around and make sure that we, we have an idea of at least is where a good place is to actually set up a base. Now dwarves prefer to live in uh, kind of rocky areas not necessarily in dirt and clay so typically you're gonna have rockier areas be you know, a few Z levels down from where you start. 
However, you're obviously going to need an entrance to your base, and a very good place to have an entrance is right next to, or at least near, a body of water. We didn't start next to a river on this uh, particular expedition, so I believe all the water is really kind of right next to where our dwarves um, wagon is, which is sort of convenient. That just means that we're probably going to create the, the entrance to our fortress right around here. So, again, looking back at the legend, we're going to start chopping trees first. So on the top left corner, tap the menu, tap designation, and the chop down trees is this T. We're going to tap that. What you're going to do is you're going to zoom out a little bit, now, you're going to designate a zone of basically a, a, an area where you're going to tell your dwarfs to chop down trees. This game's interesting because it doesn't let you directly control your characters much. It really just sort of lets you set a task and then they sort of figure out how to do it. Um, it's a little awkward at first, but it's it's actually really charming because you don't have to worry about micromanaging every individual dwarf and making sure they're all doing everything they should be doing. So I'm going to set the top right, or the top corner up here. I'm going to press the circle, and then I'm going to set a bottom corner, um, probably down around here. Um, and then I'm going to hit the circle again. So once I've done that, all of the these circles right here, which if you look, these are the tree trunks for these different trees. We have a hazel tree, we have a peach tree, we have a maple tree. Um, all of these are the, are the trunks. And the fact that it's black now just means that it's been designated to be cut down. One of our dwarfs has an ax and um, I believe most starts um, have an axe. Um, you need an axe to do the, the tree chopping amongst other things. Um, the other really important thing to have when you first start out, which again, the, the default game, make sure you have it, which is um, two mining picks. What you want to do with that is um, have two different dwarves designated as diggers and at least one dwarf designated as a chopper. You can only have as many diggers as you have pickaxes, and you can only have as many choppers as you have axes. So why don't we go ahead and look at our dwarves real quick to make sure we have all of that there. If I tap on those three lines, we are going to go into manager, no, sorry, not manager, uh, into units, and see all of our units right here. Now we have someone who's, whose job just says miner. That is clearly someone who's going to be mining. We have a wood cutter. That is clearly someone who's going to be cutting wood. Um, but we, we, what we care about is not necessarily the people that are doing, or the dwarfs that are doing this. It's more um, who's doing which jobs. So if you hit close, go back to the menu, and look at labors over here on the right you can see how many dwarves are associated with each one of the labors in Dwarf Fortress. Now we have, um, looks like the, the default setup isn't, it's not perfect. Um, some of the, the other um, setups have, you know, all of these, or at least most of the initial ones set very well. But basically, um, you can kind of see all of the many jobs. I think the one thing that jumps out to me here is we don't have anyone dedicated to be a doctor yet. Um, that may be because we either don't have anyone who's any good at it that we initially started with, or we just haven't assigned anyone. We can go ahead and look at that in a minute. But um, I don't want to get too sidetracked and just make sure that we are looking through um, the jobs the um, woodworking is this uh, top job up here. We can see we have one dwarf designated to be a woodcutter. Um, for mining, we only have one dwarf designated to be a miner. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on miner. 
and assigns someone else to be a miner. Um, the level of proficiency just means how fast and how capable they're going to be at doing it. Um, both cutting wood and mining don't really require anyone to have a you know a good proficiency in those skills. It just means they might do it a bit slower. Um, I typically prefer to give the mining to someone who won't be doing a whole lot at least initially. Um, the jeweler sticks out in my mind here. Um, we're not going to be doing anything with jewels or jewelry for a little while. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on them. I'm just going to designate them as a miner. Go back to the miners. You can see we have two dwarfs now assigned to mining. So we're going to go back. See that we have the one woodcutter and the two miners. We're going to hit close. And just for fun, um, I want to go back into the wagon and make sure that my earlier bits were, were correct. So we have a copper pick right here. We have a copper battle axe. The battle axe can be used to chop down trees. Um, let me just make sure we have at least one more pick. Hmm, I thought we did have a second pick. I guess we don't get one in this. That's fine. It just means the, the digging will go a bit slower, and that'll definitely be something that we want to get um, built a little bit earlier. But that's okay. Um, it doesn't matter that much that we have a second person designated for mining. Uh, it just means that we'll have someone ready as soon as we're, we're done. So we've designated the trees to be cut, and that's um, one half of what we're going to be trying to do here, and the other one is digging. So we're going to go to, again, those three bars, go to designation. Mine is on the top left corner. Now this is going to be the same as we did before, although we're definitely not going to want to create a giant, huge space like we did before. Um, what I like to do is kind of have sort of a small um, entrance just in general, just to sort of let people in and out. Uh, we're going to eventually want to put doors on entrances just to make sure um, we can keep the smaller, um, you know, possible problems out of our base. So I'm going to hit this circle right here and designate down to this corner. So we'll kind of have a two wide hallway. And then again, I will create another. Actually, why don't we extend this a little bit? Because um, one of the, the nice things that we would like to try to do is create a farm. And farms can't be placed on rocks that I'm aware of. Um, you do need to have them in some sort of soil. However, a lot of the dwarvish plants do need to be planted indoors. Um, so you do need a indoor soil area for an indoor farm. So I'm going to go ahead and um, kind of just build this hallway out a little bit so I can leave a little space up above kind of in this area for um, for mining um, mining out and then eventually building a farm so from right here um, I think right here would be a good place for us to start digging down um, so what I did right there is I accidentally quote unquote accidentally created this little area where I didn't really want to create a area where I'm just gonna have them just regularly dig so on the top right corner here, there's this eraser. You can tap the eraser. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's the same designation that you've been doing, just kind of um, you're going to be erasing instead of, of designating where you want them to build. So I'll tap the circle, tap down on the corner down there, and tap that. Um, and now what we're going to want to do at this point is build some downstairs. So once they go through this hallway, they're going to want to start digging down into the ground so they can get to some rocky area where we can start building out kind of our our initial fort. Um, so we're going to go to designation. We're going to go to uh, up or sorry downstair right here and just build a two by two downstair. From there, um, if we go down a Z level. Um, you can see that the stairs aren't really there, so that's that's kind of important. Um, we want to sort of maybe add 
kind of the cursor there. So that's the top left corner. Um, we're going to go to designate, build in this case up downstairs. So that means stairs that you can go either up or down. Um, start there and end there. So if you go up, you'll see that our downstairs will now feed into some up downstairs. And if we want, we can do maybe one more Z level. Hopefully by this point we will have hit um, rock. So at that point, um, we are pretty much done, at least for, for those initial steps. Um, obviously you're not just gonna chop down trees once and you're not just gonna dig that once, but it's, you know, the, the general flow of, of kind of the initial part of the game. Um, a couple more things that I want to show before we end this section is, well, first of all, we can just hit play and kind of let our, our dwarfs do their thing. Um, oh, it looks like we do have two picks and that, that one of those picks was probably already equipped. Yeah, so I wasn't crazy. So yeah, here's the two dwarfs digging into this tunnel. Looks like they hit a uh, root patch over here. So if we you know, look, um, yeah, so peach tree roots. So um, as they dug in here, they were able to see, oh no, we're, you know, there's a bunch of, of peach tree roots. And if we go up over here, I believe you can see, uh, yeah, this is the woodcutter and he's starting to cut down the tree. And that's cool. And he's already cut down a few other trees as you can see all this wood lying around. Um, yeah, so one other thing I, I think that, that helps a lot, especially for new players, is setting up, um, uh, what are they called here, locations. Um, this is something actually that I didn't even know you could do in the base game until I discovered it on the iPad. So if you tap locations, I haven't designated any locations yet, okay. Um, points and routes, sorry, not locations, points and routes. So we want to place a, a point, a point of interest on the map. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and tap on that. I want to tap the entrance to our, um, to our cave and I'm going to hit the circle button. On here, I'm just going to type in, um, you know, entrance. Um, and another one that I think's probably important very soon, we're going to want to create another um, point that's very, you know, interesting to try to go to, which is basically where, where most of the dwarves spend their time, where all the workshops are going to be and everything. We'll create that point later. Um, let me just demonstrate why this is sort of important, though. So it's fairly easy, especially when you first start to get lost. Like if you go down too many levels and you kind of dig around, you can't quite remember where your dwarfs were and you'll come, you know, zoom back out of the ground. You're like, where, where were my dwarves? I, I can't remember where we were. Well, you can go ahead and tap on those three bars, go back to points and routes, tap on the entrance, and you'll be immediately taken back to that point that you first, uh, you had created. Um, yeah, so I think that that's just a, a really great way to <laughs> make sure you don't, you know, shoot yourself in the foot by exploring the map too much. And I think with that, we're going to call this section done. Um, on the next section, we'll continue digging. And um, I will start talking about um, the next section here, uh, which is going to be farming. Um, from there, we can talk about the various plants. But at the very least, um, try to set up our pigtail and plump helmets. Um, and I think that that's it for this section. Thanks so much for watching.